hello everyone. My name is Matthew De Silva, and I'm here with the lovely Farida Bedway. She is a co-founder of a fintech company that specializes in developing branchless banking software, software solutions for banks and microfinance institutions. Prior to that, she also worked in the telecom software industry, developing mobile gateways and services for mobile networks and content pro providers. She is also the author and a disability rights advocate and has been featured on many local and international media platforms, including CNN, BBC, MSNBC Africa, and more. She is a public speaker and a young global leader in the World Economic Forum. Please say hello for us, Farida. Nice, nice to meet you again. Hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm just going to give a quick synopsis of what we're going to be talking about today. So in this panel, we're going to try to discuss the lived experience of differently abled persons and, in, and initiatives that make a difference in the, in the health outcomes as they relate to NCD prevention. What do you think people make mistakes about when they interact or think of disabled people? Okay. Uh, well, well, they, they immediately assume that because you have a physical disability, you are also, you're also mentally challenged, which most of the time is not the case. Mm -hmm. and, and even with the mental, even with the, um, the angle of being mentally challenged, they, they actually do not see it, it as, an, as an illness as much as they, they just regard it as being stupid. So, I mean, so that, that is a whole different ball game on its own. Yeah. But, but, but that is the number one mistake people make. They, they, they also think that just because you are you have a physical challenge, you're, 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 you're capable of, of speaking. So it's like you go somewhere with, with, with your driver or your caregiver or somebody, then instead of them addressing you directly, they rather address the person you are with, which, which is usually very insulting, especially when, when you are the one who, who, who have initiated the conversation with them. And, and and I used to get so worked up about that that I mean I I initiated I am the one who initiated a conversation with you. So obviously you can see that I'm capable of speaking. So why are you speaking to somebody else instead of of, um, of addressing me directly? So those are some of the, of the, of the various challenges in, in general. But when it comes to Africa and uh, West Africa and and, and, and developing countries in this part of the world, you, you have this stigma of disability being a taboo in various communities. So most of the time, people believe that that a disability is a result of a curse because somebody did something wrong with your family. So they don't want to come near you because they're afraid they will also be cursed. So, that is the bigger battle that we have to fight in this part of the world, which, which is not common to other parts of the world, but that is here. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's a good point to bring up. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, no, in, I guess in that, some areas in Africa that, yes, people could consider things to be curses or not consider you to be someone who they can speak to it. That seems incredibly challenging, especially when you're the one with the knowledge here. You're the one who's trying to, I don't know, set up a bank account or something. You know what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, I mean, things have gotten, have gotten better over the past 15 years or so because I have been talking a lot about it on the media and all yeah. this. But I remember when I first started going out on my own without, without my mother or somebody following me. It's like I, I, I used to go out with, with my driver, so I'll, I'll go to the shop to buy something. Mm -hmm. Now when I get there and I give the, the money to, to the cashier at, at the teller, and she's supposed to give me change, she, she'd rather give it to my driver instead of giving it to me. And I'm like, I mean, it was, it, it, was, it was very insulting because I'm good enough for you to receive money from me, but I'm, but I'm not good enough for you to give me 
Change. I'm actually back to me. It didn't make any sense. So, I mean, I I told a few of them off, and after that, I mean, they realized that 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 they can't be playing these kind of games with me. So, after that, I think things they, they, my, my reputation started preceding me. So, so I did not get get as much <laughs> as, as as I used to get here. Yeah. But now I think there's, although we are nowhere near near where I want to be, in ter- I want us to be in terms of awareness creation. I think we have made tremendous strides when it comes when I compare twenty years ago to now. Because now there are lots of, of parents and friends of children with disabilities who are coming out and advocating for their children as well. So something that was it. That were virtually non-existent 20 years ago. I mean, there were, there were, there were only two or three mothers of children with disabilities who we knew who were actually advocating. But now there are a number of them who are trying to, to change society for the better for their children. That's good to hear. Slow progress, but it's still progress. That's important. Yeah. All right. I'll move on to the next question. What do you consider to be something everyone should consider when interacting with you and what stigma to avoid. So I, this kind of bleeds into the other one, or if there's anything else you wanted to mention. So, so, so as I said, I mean, when you, when you meet someone with a disability, do not assume the person is, is, is mentally challenged or, or, or speech impaired for that matter. I mean, yeah. So, so I mean, talk to the person. If the person doesn't respond, then, then you know that that the person cannot cannot communicate with you. But but if you do not try, you, you, you never know what what that person is capable of doing. And for me, I find it very sad because there there are lots of children and adults with disabilities who are super intelligent, who are funny, who 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 will make great friends, but, but because of of what people see about them physically, they do not even attempt to get to know them. It turns into a, a bit of a judging a book by its cover situation. Exactly. I'll move on to uh, my next question. So for non-communable diseases like cancer, diabetes, strokes, how do you believe that prevention of them could be better tailored to help people with disabilities in Africa, or as a whole. Well, there's a lot of um, miseducation going on in the disability community. I mean, because because a lot of people do not even understand the the, the cause of the disability. They do not even understand the extent of the disability or anything like that. So for instance, as soon as you have a child with a disability and you take the child to the hospital for let's say something as common as malaria, you immediately assume that it's the child's disability that is causing the child to to behave, to feel that way. Instead of testing the child for for the, for the normal test that, that you give to any other child. So, so even the healthcare professionals are not very well versed in disability issues. So, I mean, you have to start with them. Let let them get get the training and the sensitivity that and, and empathy that's needed when you are dealing with with people with disabilities. I mean, most most of the hospitals don't don't even have a sign language interpreter. So I'm wondering how people with, with hearing impairment communicate when, when they go to the hospital. So that means they cannot go to the hospital by themselves. They have to go with somebody who can communicate with them. And interpreters are not very common or, or affordable in this part of in Ghana for that matter. So, 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 so it's a very dicey situation. And and it would be useful if 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 the nurses and things at, at least learned basic sign language so that when somebody comes with a, with, 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 a, with an illness or something, they'll be able to communicate with the person and get 
to, 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 to do the initial first, first, first aid or whatever for that person. I mean, yeah. No, that's, I agree 100%. It, it's up to the healthcare workers to, I guess, do a little bit better in their education and trying to be able to accommodate for everyone, not just, yeah. not just certain things. It's part of their. It's part of the job as well to be able to help everyone that walks in, right? So. Yeah, and 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 because and because most of the time, especially those those with also mean conditions, which are which are very complicated to diagnose and all those things, it, it is even more difficult for people like that when they get other non-communicable diseases because in the first place the health care workers do not really understand. Yeah, the extent of their of their, of their, of their yeah. condition. Not to talk of adding another condition to it. So it makes it even more difficult. Absolutely, so, yeah. For everybody. Yeah, no, so communication, yeah, no, it could be definitely hard to communicate in those situations when no one's willing to, when no one's willing to help. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'll move on to our next question. That now we're going to get a little bit more personal into uh, you more instead of general. So as I mentioned prior, you started a fintech company specialized in developing branchless banking solutions. What made you leave your previous positions to go out and start your own company? I, I actually left left. That company started a new company, but, but then that is. Oh. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so, so, so to answer that question, um, I saw I, I, I built a system for, for microfinance companies, and I realized that there was a need for um, for that system in the market. So the, the one who, the, the owner of the company, that I built a system for so, so a market opportunity. So he said that we, we should set up let us sell and, and start selling the solution to other micro companies. companies. So that is how it started out. Yeah. And, so yeah. So it, 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 it's not something that I set out to do. I mean, I never wanted to be an, an entrepreneur. It's just circumstances that pushed me into the, into the world of, of, of entrepreneurship and it looks like I'm stuck. I'm stuck there. Yeah. Uh, uh, so to follow up on that, perhaps, what benefits do you think that the branches banking provides, it, especially to the, the disabled community? So um, so it makes it, it easier for them to um, to do just online transactions, so they don't have to go to the to the bank too hard. Um, the the field agents come come to their houses and they collect money and deposit money to their accounts and all those things. And um, because unless that is, most of the bank halls of these of these institutions are not disability friendly, so it makes it even even more difficult for them to to go even if they wanted to go. So I think, I mean, that is the whole, that is the lovely part of, of, of FinTech. I mean, it, it opens up possibilities for those who, who are previously marginalized because of their circumstances or, or their conditions. So, so, yeah. That's good to hear. It's good to hear. Um, to delve a little bit back, into you again, you have a book, Definition of a Miracle. And in that book, you highlight that you were thrust into a society where disability was not understood, as you mentioned a couple of times here. What challenges did you face when you first arrived? What culture shock did you face when you first arrived into Ghana at a young age? Well, honestly, I don't I don't remember that much because I was nine years old at the time. All right, yeah. so, 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 apart, yeah. so so apart from from that, then suddenly my disability started becoming as I said, there, there's a lot of misconception about disability in this part of the world. 
they believe, they generally believe that 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 you can be healed by by prayers and all those things. I mean, I'm a Christian. I believe in all those things, but I also believe that um, that I'm this way for a reason, and that is to empower and inspire people. I mean, if if I wasn't, if I didn't have this this disability, I would not be be on this call talking to you right now. I'd probably be be, be, be just like anybody else. So when you realize that, look, this is your calling, and this this is what you are put on this earth to do. And, and you get it confirmed over and over again by parents of children with disabilities who come up to you and tell you that because because of you I, I have I have hope for my children and all it makes it all worth worthwhile. It's heartwarming. That that's heartwarming. <laughs> yeah, no, that that that's very kind. That an incredible outlook to have on it. Sorry, taking a little bit of back. Because <laughs> <laughs> not everyone has, like those parents perhaps, not everyone has the courage in themselves or the confidence in themselves. Some people don't have that positivity in themselves and they, they need help. They need people like you to encourage them, to show them that, look, you can, you can be very successful. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm also, I'm always asked, like, oh, where do I get my confidence from? And I'm like, why shouldn't I be confident? I mean, just because exactly. I, have, I have, I have, a, I, 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 I don't really look, look, look at disability like this, that there are things that I can't do because of my disability. But there are things that you can, that, that, that the other person also cannot do because of their circumstances that I can do. So it's a matter of 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 us realizing that look, look we all have have weak points and, 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 and high points. And let's focus on what we can do and do them very well and, and not worry about the things that we cannot do. So it, 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 as far as I'm concerned, everybody has everybody on this earth has some form of disability that that, that they don't know about. But I'm blessed because I know what my disability is. And I have known for my whole life. So I'm I'm in a no I'm in a no misconceptions or anything. I know what my capabilities are, I know what I can what I can do. And and I've decided to to um, to focus on what I can do and not worry about what I can do. Because there's nothing that I can I can do about the things I can do. Yeah. And and I guess it all comes from comes from the family setting as well because I was brought up to to believe that, that I'm capable of doing everything that I put my mind to within 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 reason of course of my of, of my physical disability but 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 as long as as, as I was intellectually able to 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 compete with with my peers I didn't see myself as and being underprivileged or or being, I mean, whatever. No, that's a great outlook to have on it. That's that's what I think this conversation and I'm sure so many others hope to inspire in young people who are currently dealing with figuring it out for themselves as well. I think I think if we spend too much time mourning about about situations that we can't change, I mean, instead of instead of, of focusing on, on the things that, that that we can do, because I mean, the, the situation that that you can't change, you can't change this, that is it. I mean, you, you can't you, you you can wish it it, it were another way, but at the end of the day, it will never be that way. You might as well just just get, get on with your life and move on. But, but I always say that I think it, it, it is easier for those of us who were born with disabilities to accept this than those who are, than those who get disabled halfway through their lives because they have something to compare with. We don't have anything to compare mm. with because I mean I have never 
Well, that's a very unique perspective as well. I, yeah, I'm sure people who become disabled partway through their life face, um, they'll face unique challenges amongst themselves as well of uh, coping with the the radical change in their own life. Yeah. Um, I'll move on to the next question, which I want you to uh, tell me a bit about why you decided to create, I'm going to pronounce it, Karmza, and what did it mean to you? <laughs> so, growing up, I loved, I loved cartoons, I loved superheroes, I mean, I was, I, I was a tomboy, I liked playing with cats, I grew up in the 80s where He Man, Shira, Superman, and all the people, right? What the people that we all used, used to love. But I never saw somebody who represented me. I never felt represented in that, in that realm because there was nobody with, with my disability in that realm. And I'm somebody who, I mean, as I said, I, I, I wasn't brought up to believe that I have limitations intellectually. So if there's something that I can do, I, I'd rather do it than complain about, about why it's not done. Because I mean, I could, I could sit down and complain that, oh, why, why hasn't anybody done, done a superhero with a bad policy? But I'm like, why should I complain when I'm capable of doing it? Why, why shouldn't I be the one to do it? So, so that is how I came up with Kamga and, and, and I got, um, the, 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 I had a meeting. So what happened was, um, I was, I was in, in Kigali for, for a conference and the, the owner of, of the animation studio, Aram, was also there for the conference and I sat in one of his sessions. And he was showing us how to, um, how to, how to do an, a storyline for, for for an an animation and all those things, and it was like I I, I was like, but, but this, this this is such a simple thing. So after that, I had a conversation with him, and he said that oh, if I write the story, he's happy to draw it. So that is how we came together, and kind that came came up, and I mean the the response had been tremendous, and. And I never anticipated that this kind of response to come there. But yeah. <laughs> when I first read that, I was I was I was like, wow, this seems interesting. I'm sure I'm sure this will put a bit of a smile on your face when I ask you about it. I think yeah, I got that and, reaction. Yeah, and um, <laughs> and for me, I wanted I wanted her to get her superpowers through her through her working aid, to her assistant device. Because mm -hmm. growing up, and, and any child or adult who has to use an assistant an, an assistive device will tell you that at one point or the other, we tend to resent having to use them. So it's like, if, um, if suddenly the, the superhero gets her powers through their assistive device, and, and because of, of that assistive device, he or she can fly and, and, and change the bad guys, it would encourage children who, are, who, who feel resentful about using their assistive devices to rather embrace them, because suddenly there's somebody with crutches who, who, who because of the crutches, has become a superhero. That, that's a great idea. Yeah, encourages them to embrace, embrace who they are a little bit more. That's a great idea. Um, so that's all of, of my normal questions. I wanted to ask you yourself if you have any recent progress, accomplishments, or anything like that you'd like to share before we end our meeting. So as I said, I've left I've left the Finta company and I started a new company mm -hmm. and. Um, I'm, I'm building solutions that create impact in society. So I built something for telehealth system. I built, I'm, I, and I want to build something for the disability community. 
uh, so, so that at least we'll get to know how many we are. Because right now, there are virtually no data on, 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 on disabilities in, in Ghana or, 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 or even across Africa for that matter. I mean, everything is guesswork. So, so, so they, they do the census and they estimate that, okay, 4% of the population have disability. And and that is a rough estimate. And, and 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 if you are going to break it down to know what kind of disabilities they have, whether they are hearing impaired, whether they are speech impaired, whether they are physical, whether they are mental, there's no data on that. So how can so how can you advocate for things if you have no data to show the government that that these are the numbers that you have? So so that is the project that I'm I'm also going to do this year. So. That's a huge project to undertake. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of work to undertake. I hope that that's successful <laughs> for you. <laughs> it would be great to um, to see more data. I know for a big part of my research, I I keep, I keep seeing that my recommendations is that we need the data to know how to better help. And that's exactly what you're trying to accomplish here. Yeah. Um, because just the knowledge of knowing what areas need more help, more assistance, yeah, things like that. You can visualize how how much people actually need the help, and you can actually all allocate better where the help will end up going. But it takes the first step of getting getting the data. Yeah, that's a very big task, and um, mm -hmm. I wish you all the best and all the luck in that Thank one. You. So that's the end of our uh, session for today on uh, disabilities in Africa as they relate to NCDs. Thank you so much, Farida. Very happy to have you here. It, it was great talking to you. Hope you have a good rest of the year. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>